Oh, hello. You're just in time for my daily quarantine happy hour. Hi, I'm Leslie. My name is Jason Weber. My yoga. I'm a sales rep and for Boston Angels Company. Me, a top user. And also, this is my daughter. Taster is somebody who really appreciates whiskey, does a lot of tasting, but it's more than that, it's someone who can make other people's whiskey experience special. 2009, I met my wife, quickly discovered we were both Maker's Mark drinkers at the time, went out and got a ring made of Maker's Mark barrel stave, and got married. Hey, over here, pick me. I'm full of caramel and sweets and fruit. You're gonna love me! Rather than just tell you why I think I should be the world's top whiskey taster, instead, I thought I'd just show you. I am the world's okayest whiskey taster. I was pretty content with that title. And then I found out that the Bardstown Bourbon Company was trying to trying to crown the, the world's best, most fantastic, the greatest whiskey taster on the planet. Well, that's me. It's me. I like to uh, smell with my mouth open uh, so I don't burn my olfactory nerve with the ethics. Very full bodied, oily, coats the tongue. Oh my gosh, the full bodiness of that. The sweetness, but not too sweet. Unreal. Wow, this is a completely unique bourbon. I mean, I'm walking into every little hole in the wall liquor store in this country every time I travel. I want to meet the people behind it, everything that has to do with it. I mean, when I tell you that I nerd out more for Steve Nally than I do for Steve Martin, you know I'm telling the truth. Seth and I are finishing the bottle of Michael Moore. Thank you, Steve, for sharing that with us. Guys! And that's how it... Hello, everyone, and welcome to the fourth regional semifinal for World's Top Whiskey Taster. My name is Sam Montgomery. I am the national brand ambassador for Bardstown Bourbon Company, and I will be your host for this evening's event. This week, we have crowned a regional champion from Tennessee, Chicago, and Indiana. Tonight, we will crown a regional champion from the sunny state of Florida, that winner will move on to our finals hosted right here at our distillery located in the bourbon capital of the world to compete against the other regional winners to become the world's top whiskey taster. So how are we going to decide which one of these lucky Floridians will move on to the finals? Well, Bardstown Bourbon Company sent each contestant a challenge kit, which they each have right in front of them as I speak. Inside these kits are four mystery whiskeys that correspond to four challenge that they will each go through tonight. We are going to challenge them to see if their palates can determine proof, age, whiskey type, and finishing barrel. Each challenge will get a little bit harder as well as increase in potential points. Their scores will be posted live in real time after each challenge. When those four challenges are complete, each contestant will have three minutes to present a flight of whiskeys, which they have curated to our guest judges. Their flight presentations will give these guys a chance to show us their whiskey personalities, and therefore their presentations will be worth the most points. We are currently broadcasting this event live to our Facebook page and YouTube channel, which I have up on my phone and can see all of your comments coming in. So please, if you are watching at home to support a contestant here that may be a friend or family member, send some words of encouragement so that I can shout that out while they're going through the challenge. If you're watching uh, just to support uh, the, the whiskey culture and the competition that we're holding, uh, send me something to say. I'll, I'll shout you out. Tell me what you're drinking, if you have any questions, or if you think that you could have been the world's top whiskey taster had you been in this competition. I want to hear it. Uh, that being said, let's introduce you uh, to our contestants for this evening. Uh, I'm going to ask the contestants to, as I call your name, just give everybody a little wave. And we have two contestants tonight making this a very intimate competition. We have Eric Hale 
uh, who is also known as Pappy Van Montreche to those of you uh, that are on Instagram following him. Uh, very happy to have him here. And we also have Michael Ciccarelli. Uh, so these are your two contestants tonight that are competing to be that regional champion. Guys, best of luck to you both. Uh, really excited to see the results at the end of this show. So uh, if you could both give me a thumbs up that you guys have your challenge kits out, ready to go and are uh, ready to begin. All right, I got confirmation there. So go ahead and grab that bottle that is labeled number one and give yourselves a small pour, but leave those pours right there on the table. Don't smell them or taste them just yet. We wanna let those whiskeys breathe a bit while I explain what we're doing in challenge number one. So challenge number one is called high or low. With this challenge, each contestant must determine if the whiskey is either higher or lower than 100 proof. One point will be given for the correct answer, either being high or low, and a bonus point will be awarded if the contestant can guess the exact proof within two points. For example, if the said whiskey is 90 proof, any answer between 88 and 92 will receive that bonus point. Uh, each contestant has two minutes. They're going to do this together. Uh, we're gonna pull a timer up on screen that they can see and you guys can see at home. Contestants, you guys have to submit your answers uh, before that timer runs out. So you'll be able to see the timer, but I will also chime in and let you know when you have about 20 to 30 seconds left to give you guys enough time to submit those answers. So thumbs up, Eric and Michael, if you guys understand and are ready to go. Okay. Uh, our behind the scenes producer, Nick, is going to pull up that timer and on my countdown, I will give you guys the go. And as soon as we see that come up here, there it is. And all right, in three, two, one, taste away guys. Best of luck during challenge number one. And while we have two minutes to let these guys taste those whiskeys and try to pin the proof on that whiskey, I wanna tell everybody at home what everybody is competing for in these regional competitions. So each regional winner is going to come here, as I said, to our distillery to become the world's top whiskey taster. That world's top whiskey taster is going to win $20,000 in cash a scholarship to Moonshine University to become an executive bourbon steward, and the opportunity to come to the distillery and blend their own unique bourbon with our master distiller, Steve Nally. Uh, but not only that, we're going to send the world's top whiskey taster to some of the top whiskey festivals in the country to represent Bardstown Bourbon Company as an ambassador. So these guys have a lot on the line as they go through these challenges and present their flights. Um, and personally, I can say that while $20,000 is good for anybody, <laughs> uh, those other prizes are incredible as well. I have become an executive bourbon steward. I have traveled around the country for Bardstown Bourbon Company, and I've blended my own bourbon. Uh, so uh, without the $20,000, still incredible, but that cash is really just a, a cherry on top. So I uh, can't wait to see which of these two guys tonight is going to have the opportunity to come here and compete one more time for that grand prize. So um, it looks like we have 20 seconds left. You can see the guys on screen. It looks like they finished rather quickly. Um, so hopefully we see some, some points on the board after this challenge. Uh, they're looking pretty confident and smiling. So that is, that is a good sign. I'm excited for you guys. And it looks like the timer's running out in two, one, zero. So whiskeys are down and their answers are in. While our designated scorekeeper is tallying up those points uh, to update the live scoreboard here shortly, I want to introduce our first guest judge tonight, uh, our state manager for Florida. Uh, Mr. Aaron Silverman is one of our guest judges that will be judging these two uh, with their flight presentations. Aaron, thanks for joining us tonight. How are you feeling and how excited are you to see if the world's top whiskey taster is in fact gonna come from Florida? 
Well, I'm feeling great. Thank you, Sam. And uh, welcome, Michael and Eric. Happy that you guys are joining us today. Um, you know, I'm happy that we have two of the best palates in Florida. Um, of course, coming from the West Coast in the Tampa, Sarasota area, one of the best bourbon capitals here in Florida. Um, but no, I'm excited. I'm excited to see what's going to happen uh, right off at the gates here. I mean, both Eric and Michael looked at like they knew exactly what was in that that uh, that glass bottle right there. So looking forward to see if they are that confident or they just look confident. Awesome. Well, thanks for uh, thanks for the feedback. Can't wait to see what you think of these guys as they present their flights later. Uh, and it looks like round one scores are in. So before we show you guys that scoreboard, say who's going to take the lead uh, after challenge one, I want to let you guys know what the mystery, mystery whiskey uh, you had in your glass was. So for challenge number one, you had to determine the proof, higher or lower than 100. Uh, and if you could guess the exact proof within two points and your mystery whiskey is Buffalo Trace. So it is in fact a 90 proof whiskey, making it lower than 100 proof. And if you guessed anything between 88 and 92, then you got both points for the round, uh, equaling a total of two points. So let's see what the scores look like after the first challenge. And it looks like Eric got both points on this round. Eric, incredible job. Tough break for Michael, but that's okay. We have a lot more challenges to come and a lot more points to dole out. Uh, so hang in there. Uh, you could make a real good comeback. Tons of opportunity. So we're going to dive right in to challenge number two. Uh, Eric and Michael, go ahead and grab the bottle labeled number two that we gave you guys in your kits. Pour yourselves a little pour and don't taste it just yet. Uh, let's let them breathe while I tell you what you're going to do in challenge number two. So challenge number two is called young or old. In this challenge, each of you are going to determine the age of the whiskey. The whiskey will either be younger than four years old or older than eight years. If you believe it's younger than four years, your answer should be young. If you believe it's older than eight years, your answer should be old. It is 100% not in between those age statements. I wanted to give you a, a little bit of contrast here as I know this is um, very hard doing these blind. Um, so you also have the opportunity to get a bonus point. If you can pin the age within a year, therefore, if it is an 18 year bourbon, uh, any answer between 17 and 19 would get you that bonus point. Uh, once again, you're going to have two minutes to taste, evaluate, and submit your answers. And we'll see how you guys do after this challenge. Mike and Eric, do you guys understand the rules and are ready to go with your whiskeys? Awesome. Nick, go ahead and bring up the timer on screen and I'll count it down to let you guys begin. And there it is. So in three, two, one, taste away and best of luck during challenge number two. So we've got another two minutes to spare. I'm going to check in on Facebook and see if uh, people are giving, in, uh, giving these guys any shout outs. Uh, Eric Ringo says, does Eric get style points? Question mark. Uh, you know, we didn't add style in to uh, the criteria for these challenges. But if we did, uh, definitely points for Eric there. Uh, maybe next year in these challenges. Um, it looks like uh, we have a lot of people viewing. Um, tons of people viewing. Uh, not a whole lot of people chiming in. Samantha Thompson says Tampa uh, and Mike. So Mike's got some fans coming in. Um, some people uh, saying, let's go Pappy. So we've got some, some followers of Pappy Van Montreche, uh watching and supporting you, sending all their love. Uh, and of course, somebody's got to say, love the jacket, Pappy. Of course, of course they do. Um, and it looks like uh, we're getting down to time to uh, enter in your answers, please. Uh, so hopefully you guys are feeling a bit more challenged with challenge number two, but still confident uh, to get some points on the board here. 
Uh, these are meant to get a little bit harder, uh, but not too hard. So we're gonna see how these two do in a second here. We've got 20 seconds left on the clock. 20 seconds to see them both drinking water and, and kind of sitting back a little bit. So it looks like these two have their answers in and are ready to see how they did. So we'll let the, uh, the timer run out here with five seconds left. And three, two, one, timer's out. So Laurel, our wonderful marketing director is, is keeping score as she has all week. Uh, wonderfully. Uh, so thank you, Laurel. She's going to have that scoreboard ready for us in just a few moments. And before uh, we reveal those scores and the mystery bottle, I would like to introduce our second guest judge tonight, who is our chief financial officer for Bardstown Bourbon Company and a true HBIC uh, Ingrid Gentry is back tonight. She was helping us guest judge last night for Indiana. Uh, Ingrid, thanks for joining us. Uh, something that we did not tell everybody last night is that you've actually been in the bourbon business for a long time. Uh, how long were you with Brown Foreman before you came on to Bardstown Bourbon Company? Yeah, I was with Brown Foreman for 18 years and I had the great fortune to sell bourbon all over the world. Um, in Asia Pacific and the in Europe and um, and then back in the U.S. So um, huge fan and you guys are just stunning and it's, looks like it's a lot of fun. So glad to have you all here. Thank you, Ingrid. Uh, we're we're happy to have you guests judging tonight. It is a real treat. Uh, so excited to see uh, what your feedback is after these two present their flights. And yeah, I'm getting we'll those checks ready. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, she's writing that check for $20,000. <laughs> That's her right there. So thank you, Ingrid. Uh, we'll check back in with you um, once we are ready for these presentations. Um, before we reveal the scores, let's reveal the mystery whiskey for challenge number two. Uh, so the challenge was to guess if it was younger or older. Uh, younger than four years or older than eight years. And then if you could, for a bonus point, uh, try and pin the exact year within, or exact age within a year. And the mystery whiskey is Bird Dog 10 Year. So it is in fact 10 years old. If you guessed anything in between nine and 11, you got the bonus point. And if you guessed old, then you got the first point. And let's see how these two did after the second challenge. All right, well, Michael's back in the game. He got both points on this round uh, and Eric still managed to get at least one point on this round, making this a real tight race. Uh, Eric still has the lead, but only by one point, uh, which means it is anybody's win at this, at this uh, time in the competition. And we've got a lot more points to dole out. So great job to the both of you for getting something on this round. Uh, we are going to step up the game a little bit in challenge three and make it a little bit harder on you guys. So if you want to go ahead and grab the challenge three bottle, give yourselves a little pour and keep it right there while I go over the rules. Uh, and then I'll give you guys the countdown in a minute here. So challenge number three is called which whiskey? In this challenge, you must determine what type of whiskey you have in your glass. And we're going to help you out just a little bit by giving you a multiple choice. So the whiskey in your glass is either a bourbon whiskey, a rye whiskey, a scotch whiskey, or an Irish whiskey. Uh, so you have two minutes to decide uh, which whiskey type for one point. And we're gonna give you a bonus of five points if you can take it a step further and pin the label of that said whiskey. So for example, if it is a scotch and you guess that it is Johnny Walker and it is in fact Johnny Walker, then you are going to get a total of six points for the round, giving yourself an incredible lead, uh, assuming that you both don't get it. Uh, nobody in this competition so far, this is our fourth regional, um, has been able to pin the label. Uh, so let's see if Florida is going to step it up and uh, make themselves uh, stick out against the other regions by guessing that label. Uh, guys, you'll have two minutes to taste and evaluate and to get your answers in. 
Give me a thumbs up if you guys are ready to go. Okay, uh, Nick, go ahead and pull the two minute timer on screen and on my countdown, we will begin. So in three, two, one, and taste away. Best of luck on this round. Uh, this is definitely, in my opinion, uh, one of the harder rounds even of all four uh, because there's such a subtle difference between bourbon and rye and then a subtle difference between scotch and Irish uh, that they're easy to get confused. We actually hold um, internal blind tastings with us at BBC and not to just have a drink, but to stay sharp on our whiskey palates. Uh, which is kind of how the idea for this competition was born. Um, and we have successfully done this uh, with our crew a few times, but it is one of the more challenging ones. So I'm excited to see if either of these guys can pin the whiskey type. Um, let's see if anybody's coming in on the chat to send some love. Um, let's see. Andrew Rout, or maybe Roots, said guessing the age within a year. That's tough. It is. If you guys have um, you know, roommates or, or partners that you live with, or you're going to have a, a whiskey night, I would challenge you guys to pull some stuff off of your bars at home and challenge each other in the same way. It's really fun, really exciting, and helps you kind of hone in your whiskey skills. Uh, Leslie Ann McBride, a uh, big fan of, of the brand, a good friend of ours, is rooting for Eric. Uh, so she wanted to say hi. That is nice. And Eric Ringo says, 10 year is not common. Interesting. It is in Kentucky, uh, but we are kind of special here. <laughs> Definitely not as common as your small badges without an age statement, though. That's for sure. Um, so looks like we are getting close to the end of the timer here. Uh, 12 seconds left, guys, to, to taste, evaluate, and, and get those answers in. And it looks like uh, they both have their answers in, taking a sip of their water, eager to see the answers. Uh, so before we get to the bottle reveal and, and see what the scores look like after round uh, three, I would like to introduce our third and final guest judge for the night. And a real treat tonight uh, because he's been working behind the scenes for, for all of these that we've produced so far this week. Tonight, he is a guest judge and we have our executive creative director, Michael Powell, with us uh, as our final guest judge. He is, responsible, he is responsible for everything branded, including everything branded that you see on screen tonight. Uh, but any of our social media posts, all of our bottle design, all of those things, uh, he's really, uh, you know, the, the man behind the curtain for a lot of the, the things that you guys see. Michael, thanks for being with us tonight. Uh, you got a drink uh, in your hand, it looks like. What are you drinking while you uh, get ready to see these five presentations? Well, since there's a little bit of Christmas in the air, a little uh, uh, fall vibe, I, I, I sprang for some scotch. So I got a Laphroaig 10-year out this evening. Oh, nice. That is, uh, let's see, a, an Isla whiskey. That's got that uh, real big peatiness and smokiness on it. I feel like if we had put that into the whiskey type, people would have probably pinned that one pretty easily, but that's awesome. Um, how yeah, excited that would have been you? an easy one <laughs> for sure. <laughs> are you excited for these flight presentations? We, we've seen some good ones all week from Tennessee and Chicago, Indiana. Uh, do you think uh, these Florida guys are, are gonna show up and, and give some good ones tonight as well? I am very excited to see it. You know, as a, an innovative uh, bourbon brand, um, it's, it, it, it's really great to see our contestants being innovative as well. Um, the, the flights have been so interesting. Uh, a lot of thought went into them, uh, good concepts, uh, a story behind it. They've been really great. So I'm really excited to see what Eric and Michael come up with tonight. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us. I'm excited to see your feedback after their presentations. Uh, and we'll check in with you then. Um, so Eric and Michael, uh, we will reveal the bottle of whiskey that we gave you guys for challenge three in your challenge kits. You had to determine uh, which whiskey type, uh, whiskey category was in your glass from bourbon, rye, scotch, or Irish. And the mystery whiskey is 
Dewar's Scotch. So we saw this earlier in the week with one of our competitions. Uh, it is in fact a Scotch. And if you were uh, sharp enough to guess that it was Dewar's, then you got a total of six points for the round. So let's see if either of these two got any points after challenge number three. Oh my gosh. And it looks like Eric Hale actually got all six points. That's amazing. Nobody's been able to do that so far. So congratulations to you. Uh, I got to ask you, have you drank a lot of doers? Uh oh, you're muted. Do you want to unmute yourself and then tell us uh, if you're a doers drinker? No, I, I actually I actually detest scotch. So it was, uh, <laughs> it's, it's really bizarre, but um, there's only a handful of scotches outside of like the crazy aged ones that I've tried. And one is always just the basic Glenlivet 12 and then doers. And then like, just, it just triggered something in my, like, in my memory that was like, this tastes like just doers. Like it's something simple and it's not super peaty. And so I, half of it was a guess to be honest, but I was like, it's worth a shot. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. You are officially the first person uh, through the challenges that we've held so far uh, to guess the label. I did, you know, I think it's hard enough to distinguish what whiskey type it is. So I try to stick with, you know, uh, familiar labels to people, right, for, for this specific challenge. Um, so I'm glad that you got it. Uh, didn't know that you just tested scotch, uh, but that's, that's interesting. He's just a, a bourbon and American whiskey. Uh, lover uh, through and through and possibly the world's top whiskey taster. So uh, great job to you. Uh, we're going to move on to the fourth and final tasting challenge uh, before we get into our flight presentations, which is what I'm really excited for. So um, guys, go ahead and grab bottle number four. Give yourselves a, a little pour and let that whiskey breathe while I go through the rules. So challenge number four is called which finish. Uh, with this challenge, uh, you must determine which whiskey is in your, in your glass from the following Bardstown Bourbon Company collaboration releases. You have three options here, even though we've had several releases in this category. And the finish is either going to be the Goodwood Walnut Ale finish, the Copper and Kings Sherry finish, or the recently released Copper and Kings Orange Curacao finish. So. Even though uh, it's, it's very possible that you haven't had all three of these expressions, uh, a finished whiskey is always going to have, or should have, uh, the character of that finishing barrel. So with three, these three options, you have three very different finishing barrels. You have a beer barrel, a sherry barrel, and an orange curacao barrel. Uh, so judging uh, that alone, uh, let's see if you guys can guess which collaboration, which finished whiskey you have in your glass. Uh, this round is going to be worth five points, all or nothing, uh, no bonus, uh, but just some, some more points to see if uh, Eric can either get more of a lead or if Michael can come back and make it a closer game. So two minutes will be put on the clock for you guys to taste, evaluate, and submit your answers. Uh, can I get a thumbs up that you guys are ready to go? Awesome. And there's the timer. So on my countdown, we will get started in three, two, one. And best of luck in the final challenge. Uh, so while these guys are going through the final challenge, I do want to briefly tell you guys at home about our latest collaboration release, which is the Copper and Kings Orange Curacao finish that I have right here. Um, so this was a nine-year Tennessee bourbon that we finished in orange curacao barrels from Copper and Kings, our good friends in Louisville. And it sat in those finishing barrels for 18 months uh, to kind of pull the flavor and pull the juice out of that barrel to give this an incredibly smooth, bright, and, and somewhat citrusy flavor profile. If you all are fans of an old fashioned, uh, you can make the best and tastiest top shelf old fashioned using this orange curacao uh, collaboration as your base spirit. If you tried it, I think that is why. Half the bottle is gone already, uh, but it is absolutely delicious. Um, if you're wondering how to get your hands on this or any of our product, you can go on our website to bardstownbourbon.com. Uh, 
plug in or hit uh, where to buy and then plug in your zip code and we'll give you guys a list of all of the closest retailers and bars that carry our product and if any retailers that ship direct as well so that you guys can uh, always know where our product is. And as we go through you know, into 2021, we'll be opening up more and more markets, hopefully hitting all 50 states in a couple of years here with all of our products. So just something to get extra excited for. Uh, guys, it looks like we're, we're getting close to that 30 second mark, uh, 20 second mark as it turns out uh, to get your answers in. So hopefully you guys are feeling confident uh, in this round and excited to give us your flight presentations. I'm excited to see them. And that is five seconds left. Three, two, one, and zero. So whiskeys are down, answers are hopefully in. Um, we're gonna give Laurel, our scorekeeper, a few seconds uh, to tally up these points, update our live scoreboard. Um, so let's check in with our contestants and see how they're feeling about the challenges they just finished. Michael, what do you think of the four challenges uh, was the most difficult? And what do you think was the easiest for you? Uh, you know, overall, I think they're they're pretty cool. It's, it's a, a lot of tasting that I've uh, not been familiar with. I'm coming from the wine background, um, just like Eric as well. Uh, so I have those kind of processes and, and, and the way that I taste the wine. So tasting the whiskey is definitely a different uh, style and, and I never would have thought to go this route. So it's nice to add that to my, uh, my repertoire of knowledge for sure. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Eric, what about you? What do you think was, uh, I mean, you're, you're, you got some pretty big points on the board, so maybe none of it was hard for you, but of the four that you, uh, just went through, what do you think gave you the most, uh, difficulty? You know, uh, I think I think the last one, you know, it's um, because a carousel finish can have sort of that like burnt orange as opposed to, um, you know, your sherry finish is, is remarkable, one of a kind. It's like sherry marmalade. So like, you know, I, I narrowed it down to two, but I, I think the last one, um, you know, is, is really is really tough. And there's a lot of pressure there with the five points. So, um, you know, the proof one's tough, too, because. If you, it all depends, you know, if you had a drink before, if you didn't have a drink before, how your palate's prepared to handle it. So, um, yeah, I mean, at, at the end of the day, they're all, they're all unique. They're all tough. And this is, oh, this is easy, but, you know, uh, the, it's practice, practice makes perfect. And, you know, if you try a lot and you taste a lot, you know, you can kind of, um, it's like that who wants to be a millionaire. You can kind of like narrow it down and eliminate it. And then I think the other part is just following your gut. Like you just got to follow your gut. If you overthink it, then all of a sudden you find yourself in no man's land because you're second guessing. Yeah, I uh, couldn't agree more. It is, it is a lot harder uh, than it looks. You know, I don't know that a lot of people are really blinding themselves uh, at home, but you can be so confident when you taste a 10 year bourbon that, you know, you taste the age. But when somebody hands you a, a glass and says, how old do you think this is? It actually, you know, you start, I think it's self doubt too. The longer time that you have to think about it, uh, the more you second guess yourself and it can be quite difficult. So um, you guys are doing great. I, I can't wait to see what uh, whiskeys you guys have chosen for your flights to present. And before we get to that, um, real quickly, I wanna shout out this comment that came on on Facebook that I, I can't tell uh, who this is for, or you know, hopefully it's for one of you guys, but Kim Tracy said, good luck, dad. Also, mom said I can't have dessert because I didn't eat my dinner. Is that or one of you guys dad to, to Kim Tracy? Oh, is that Eric? <laughs> uh, yeah, let's see what let's see what you have to say about that. Uh, that's that's my that's my wife and uh, that's my daughter. So my daughter Aww. my daughter must not eat. They they went to grandma so I could have the house to myself and sort Aww. of uh, uh, get in, get into my character, which I, I just sort of do for social and you know, I'm a, I'm a dad, I, I'm, I'm less crazy in real life, but, uh, you know, it's, um, that's my daughter must not eat her dessert, but she didn't tell mom. I, I let her have ice cream for a snack earlier today. So she's good. <laughs> also, well, your family is, is watching and supporting you. Uh, so I thought I would let you know that, uh, that's great. Uh, before we, we get to scores, uh, let's reveal, let's reveal the collaboration that you guys had in your glass. Uh, so I know, I think both of you said this was kind of a tough one. Um, and the mystery whiskey 
is, oh, I almost grabbed the wrong bottle, <laughs> is the Goodwood Walnut Ale. So kind of a tricky one. It kind of has some, um, in my opinion, just some bourbon 2.0 flavors. Uh, lots of cinnamon, kind of like a Heath uh, toffee bar kind of taste. Um, so I do think on this one particularly, uh, the, the, the character from the beer finish is, is more subtle um, than the sherry or the orange curacao. So uh, let's see how you guys did after challenge four. Oh my gosh, Eric has uh, 14 points, uh, Michael with two. Um, so we are going to go into the flight presentations. Uh, there are a lot of, of points to dole out here. Um, and before we get into uh, what these guys are judged on, I kind of want to introduce that on the end with these two presentations. So. Uh, we get these guys excited about their presentations. Um, so Eric, since you are the score leader, uh, we are going to start with you and have us uh, present, have you present your flight to our guest judges. Do you have your bottles ready to go and, and present or do we need to give you a minute to situate? Uh, looks like you are ready. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to put three minutes on the clock um, and we'll show you that timer when we start it. We'll start it as soon as you start speaking. Um, and then we'll bring it back on to show you when there are two minutes left, when there is one minute left, and then once again, when there are 10 seconds left. Um, so if you are ready to go, I'm gonna have Nick pull up that timer. And uh, Eric, as soon as you start speaking, uh, we are going to start that timer, best of luck. Well, good evening, everyone, and thank you all for tuning in. Uh, I'm calling this flight a few of my favorite things. And one of my favorite things also is Halloween. So Halloween's around the corner. It's time to hit the street, go trick-or-treating. It's time to get out there and really uh, see what's going on. So I'm going to correlate that bourbon a little bit. The first one I'm trying is a wild turkey rare breed. Now, wild turkey rare breed is probably the best, most available bourbon that's on the shelf. Blend of six to eight years, and it's barrel-proof. So it's coming out of the barrel exactly how the Russell boys want you to taste it. It's also a small batch. So small batch means that they're blending the barrels together to get you that perfect flavor. And blending it all together at, at barrel proof just gets that flavor that comes out. I mean, this is known for just being honey, the toffee, caramel. Wild turkey almost has what people in the people like to call that wild turkey funk. It's that just like gooiness of, uh, of how the Russell's family kind of puts it together. It is barrel proof, so it's got that flavor. Barrel proof allows you to get more flavor off the top, and that's really important. As people sort of gradually go throughout bourbon, they sort of, I like to say, graduate to barrel proof. And by that means, it's you get the flavor as the distiller and the house ended, and that really allows you to sort of differentiate the differences. The second one I have here is one of my all-time favorites. It's from Wes Henderson. It's Angel's Envy Rye. Angel's Envy Rye is the epitome of a tableside bananas foster. It is probably either the best thing to put on your pancakes or it's the best thing to have for dessert. Or if you really love it like I do, you can just drink it whenever. But this right here is maple, toffee, banana, creme brulee, caramel. One thing I forgot to say, bit of honey with the uh, wild turkey rare breed. But this maple is just, it screams through. It's like enjoying a Butterfinger when you're at that house and they give you the whole bar. And the last one I have is from Heaven Hill, the Old Fitzgerald Bottled and Bond Nine Year. This weeded expression from them just accumulates everything that you want in a good bourbon. Toasted marshmallow, an incredible mouthfeel. It goes amazing with chocolate, chocolate of any kind. But it has this mouthfeel that coats your mouth with this graham cracker, caramel. You get the toasted vanilla and oak. You get some honey, but really it's that amazing flavor. This is a pour to be shared with friends and family and anyone alike. So cheers everyone, thank you so much. And it's an honor to be part of this. Awesome, thank you, Eric. Uh, you did a great job with uh, choosing those whiskeys uh, and describing them. I don't think this is a surprise to any of your fans or anybody that knows you, but your energy, your, your descriptors, uh, 
just has anybody uh, just drilling to try the whiskeys that you have in front of you. So really incredible job. I'm going to hand it right over to Michael. Michael, I know uh, it looks like you've got your whiskeys ready. I know you're in uh, second place by, by a pretty good gap in points, but there are a lot of points to be doled out here. So let's see if you can redeem yourself. I'm rooting for you. We are going to pull up that three minute timer on screen. Once again, we're gonna show you when it starts. We're gonna pull it back on when there are two minutes left, when there is one minute left, and then again, when there are 10 seconds left. So best of luck to you. And as soon as we can get that timer up, uh, there it is. Go ahead and start and we'll start that timer with you. All right, guys, I'm gonna uh, talk to you a little bit about this flight. So I'm going uh, across the country. So I've got something from Colorado, something from Kentucky and something from Texas, a little bit of uh, cross country styles. Uh, so I'm gonna start off with Old Elk uh, out of Fort Collins in Colorado. Um, you know, first thing right off the bat, Colorado, I don't think of bourbon, I think of snow, snowboarding, mountains. Um, this bourbon is, is a definitely very underrated. Um, it's very sneaky. Uh, the cool thing about this one is a, is a nice entry level blended whiskey um, in the fact that they use a slow cutting process to get down to the proof. Uh, so first thing to get down to a proof you do is you add water. What does water do? It creates some heat. Uh, heat tends to destroy uh, some of those secondary tertiary flavors out of the bourbon, some of the finer flavors. Uh, so the slow cutting process taking, uh, taking a span of a couple of weeks rather than a couple of days uh, really keeps that smoothness and that richness in this, uh, in this bourbon. Um, one thing you're going to notice is a little, uh, little syrupy notes. Uh, you're going to get some toasted almond. Um, maple syrup, uh, some buttery caramel, um, and then some baking spices on the end. Um, it's like candy in a glass. Uh, the mouthfeel alone just kind of coats your mouth. It's not too hot. It's an easy drinker, especially out here on this Florida patio. Uh, you know, it's not going not gonna to do me any harm uh, sipping on this whiskey all night. Then I'm going to move over into Kentucky. Uh, I've got Duke, uh, better known as John Wayne. So this is their double barrel rye, their Founders Reserve. Um, so double barrel, uh, they finish it in some new French oak. Uh, they dump it right into a barrel that previously held their nine year straight bourbon. Um, and previously before that held some Colt California Cabernet wines. Uh, the cool thing about that is coming from the wine background, it really, um, really tugged on my strings just because every wine barrel that they use uh, is at least 90 points. Uh, you get up into their higher skew, um, that, that 98 point, 100 point cab uh, really comes through on some nice dark fruits on the, on the back end, uh, really settles down and tones down that rye spice. Uh, it's, it's a very uh, noticeable rye, but on the, uh, on the other hand, it's very smooth, very easy drinking. Uh, you won't, won't really notice too much of the rye spice on this, which is fantastic. Then moving over into Texas, um, I've got Balcones out of Waco. Um, this is gonna be their single malt, uh, and this particular one is a single barrel. Um, so this one, uh, we're jumping up the proof. So we're going, starting at 88, going to 99, and then jumping, big jump up to 127 with this one. Um, my favorite thing about this bourbon is that it does not taste like 127 proof. Uh, you're gonna get incredible oak flavors uh, the, the, the flavoring that that oak imparted on this really takes away from any burn, any alcohol feel. Uh, it goes down real smooth. Um, it, you can almost pick every single layer of flavor out of this particular whiskey. It's fantastic. All right. Well, thank you, Michael. Uh, that was an excellent presentation. I, I particularly like uh, the theme that you went with going cross country, uh, showing us a, a whiskey from Colorado, Kentucky, in Texas. I've, I've never had Old Elk or Duke. Uh, and now just the way you describe them, I'm, I'm ready to, to try them when I can find them. So uh, really great job there. Uh, let's hear from some of our judges uh, now that the both of you have presented uh, to see if they have any thoughts that they would like to share about the two of your presentations. Let's start it off with Aaron Silverman, our Florida State Manager. Aaron, how did you think uh, these guys did with their presentations? Well, the presentations were great. Um, I thought it was pretty interesting that they both chose a rye for the second uh, whiskey that they were showing. Um, you guys don't know each other, so there's some sort of synergy there. Um, Eric, I was really surprised that you started off with the rare breed being at barrel proof. You kind of started out like the very top and then came down to something a little bit lighter with the weeded bourbon. 
Um, but I guess, you know, if you don't start at the top, you're, you're not going to start anywhere. So I thought that was interesting. Um, I don't like that you don't have any Bardstown bourbon behind you. <laughs> you see, you're that jacket and you're trying to like get our attention away from the back bar over there we see you we see you man uh and michael like sam said i thought it was awesome that you kind of took us on a tour of of the country because everybody thinks that bourbon comes only from kentucky when obviously that's not the case um the water sources are all different especially from the areas that you said being kentucky uh colorado and texas so i thought that was very cool uh, I'm very familiar with balconies. I also thought it was cool that you did, you know, a bourbon, a rye, and then you did a single malt, which is pretty cool. You know, America is kind of getting big with the single malts now, um, but kind of showcasing something a little bit different. So all in all, good luck to you both. Thank you, Aaron. All right, let's hear from uh, Ingrid Gentry next, our CFO. Ingrid, what did you think of these two present presentations tonight? Well, they're obviously both incredible and I love both themes. Um, Eric, I gotta tell you, Lincoln Henderson was one of my favorite people at Brown Foreman and I just love what they did down there. Um, I guess the other thing I really liked about both of them is Eric did a great job educating on tasting notes. I thought that was fantastic. And Michael did a great job educating on process, which is also fantastic. So thank you both, um, great job. Awesome, thank you, Ingrid. Uh, really good point there about kind of the, the contrast and, you know, Eric had the, the descriptors and, and Michael had the, the, the process for sure. There was definitely some uniqueness in your presentations. And last but not least, uh, let's hear from Michael Powell. Michael, what did you think about these two presentations tonight? Oh, uh, so much fun to watch. And uh, to piggyback off of what Ingrid said, I really appreciate the two different approaches. So Eric came with the enthusiasm and the bravado in his presentation. Uh, but Michael's uh, approach with geography, I'm surprised we haven't seen that yet. Um, he's the first to do that. And I thought that was a really, really cool approach and I appreciated it. All right, thank you, Michael. Um, so guys, uh, you both did wonderful tonight. Um, before we reveal the scores and our winner, uh, some quick thank yous. I know I've done this all week, but I don't wanna forget it. Uh, tonight as well uh, to everybody that has helped make this such a, a wonderful event. So first and foremost, uh, thank you to you two contestants and all the contestants that we have for these regional competitions. It is so great to see your enthusiasm and uh, just your, your love for whiskey. And we love sharing that with you guys. Uh, secondly, thank you to the judges uh, that have participated not only tonight, but all week um, after working all day during their nine to fives. Uh, it didn't take too much convincing though. We're all whiskey nerds here and we, and we love to talk about it and share that love with everybody else. Uh, thank you to everybody working behind the scenes uh, to produce this. So we know Michael Powell as our creative director making all of those beautiful branded assets for us uh, and also our guest judge for tonight. Uh, we also have Miss Laurel Altman who is our scorekeeper tonight, but way more than that, uh, she has been the one organizing uh, all of our world's top whiskey taster events, promo, run of show, everything. So huge thank you to Laurel. And then Nick Lewis is kind of our uh, behind the scenes producer that I've, I've been calling out for things as I need them. Uh, he is our state manager for the DC, Maryland area and also a, a secret tech whiz that we used 100% when we pivoted to producing these events virtually instead of live. So big thanks to all of them. Um, also, somebody not here that I should have been calling out all week is our IT guy, Matt Nelson, uh, who is everybody's hero. Uh, and it's never a planned call when we call him. He's always just around to save us when fires exist. Um, so big thank you to him. Hopefully he's watching at home. Uh, and then also a huge thank you to everybody that is viewing from home to support the contestants, to support Bardstown Bourbon Company. Or just there for your own entertainment. We hope you guys have been having a good time watching these all week. We've got more coming next week uh, as we go through some more regional competitions. Uh, and with that being said, uh, let's let's crown our winner. I did not want. To... Oh, oh, Nick, go ahead. Okay. Before we say that, I would just like to ask everyone to raise what's left in their glass and say cheers to Sam. Thank you very much for being a, a wonderful presenter this evening. Cheers yes, absolutely. <laughs> we can all agree on that.
Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. It's been fun. I hardly call this work. I am fulfilling two of my life dreams to uh, one, drink whiskey for a living, and two, be a TV game show host. Uh, so uh, it's a good week for me. Uh, and with that being said, uh, let's wait no further to crown our champion. Uh, I know that Michael and Eric have, have done incredible tonight through the challenges, through the presentations. And, um, you know, both are well-deserved candidates for the world's top whiskey taster. Um, there was a pretty big lead before going into the presentations. So uh, let's see those scores and see if we have an upset or a clear winner. Let's show them on the screen, guys. And it is, in fact, Eric Hale, Pappy Van Montreche. Congratulations. Michael, you did so great. Certainly a big congratulations to you for hanging in there. Uh, but uh, all right, Eric, let's let's spotlight your video and, and see how you're feeling about, I think, possibly having the highest score. I, I'll have to double check the facts on this, but this is our fourth regional competition. Uh, and I think 21 points might be the highest score that we've seen so far. We might actually be in the presence of the world's top whiskey taster. How does it feel, Eric? Well, first, I want to thank my liver, uh, who, uh, <laughs> you know, with, without, without that guy, it's not, uh, uh, it's not going anywhere. So, um, you know, it was tough putting together a presentation. I went, I went a million different directions to, to, to kind of put it together. I feel honored to be able to represent this region. Uh, shout out to Michael. Cheers, man. This was awesome. Us just going head to head. Uh, he's right up the road. I'm going to go buy him a, a big old glass of something. And, um, you know, I'm honored. I, I really am. You know, it's uh, you take nothing for granted and you just you just want to go out and, you know, you, you put your best foot forward. And, um, you know, I'd, I'd like to thank the the amount of stuff that I do in terms of reviews and everything kind of prepare me for this. But you're not really prepared. There's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of stuff going on. But at the end of the day, uh, I just want to give a shout out to my daughter, Tessa T-Bird. And my wife, uh, thank you so much. Uh, I know they're at uh, grandma's right now, kind of giving me my space. So uh, I, I'm excited, like I'm crazy excited. Like this is this is awesome. Uh, we're excited for you. We can't wait to bring you out here and, and see how you do if you perform as strongly against the other regional winners. Uh, so super big congratulations to you. Uh, and we'll, you. We'll, we'll see you soon. Uh, and with that, everybody, uh, that's, that's it for tonight for the Florida Regional Competition. Uh, we will be having more coming next week, uh, taking a little break uh, to let everybody enjoy their Labor Day weekend and Derby weekend. If you guys are tuning in uh, to watch the races tomorrow, make sure you guys have your mint juleps ready. Um, and we'll resume on Tuesday with, I believe, Ohio, if I'm not mistaken. So that should be at 6 p.m. Eastern. Uh, same place on our Facebook page, Streaming Live, and our YouTube channel, Streaming Live. So please uh, tune in and find out who Eric is going to be competing against uh, coming up soon here in the finals. Uh, thank you all, and have a wonderful night. Cheers.